Hello peeps and welcome back to Galt Scourge. I'm just sitting here waiting for some more liquid crystal stuff to purify and looks like we're done so we'll flip the lever off and get the rest of my emeralds out. Um, I burned through most of our nether stars getting this but I got two crystals worth done so should keep us in power for a while once the crystallizer finishes working. Uh, burned through the first crystal finally. Holy crap frame rate drop. <clears throat> Normally, I walk outside and let things around me render a little bit before I start recording, so... And it's raining, so that doesn't help. So, alright. But yeah, I burned through most of our power in the crystals that I had. I made two, burned one completely up. The last one, when I looked, was down to about 23% left, so... Yeah. Need to get some more power sorted. We're good on stored power at the moment, but I want to be better. But there's something that I've been putting off, and I want to get started on it this episode. We need a better ME system. So, in order to accomplish that, we're going to breach two subjects today. ME controllers and P2P tunnels. Let's go ahead and make a few of these P2P tunnels real quick so that I can explain what they do. And we're going to need a memory card. Just one. Uh, we'll need some of our cable. Give me cable. Thank you. And we're going to need to get some controllers. Which is Fluix crystals. has to be pure Fluix for this. Skystone blocks and engineering processors. I went ahead and made a ton of stuff off camera for this. So we're going to need probably about 22 of these things for the controller that I want to build. Now, I'm going to take a few minutes here <clears throat> to discuss ME networks real quick. Just, you know, for the sake of argument. An ME network. Actually, you know what? Let's discuss the P2P tunnels, and then we'll discuss the controllers. Uh, we're also going to need some quartz fiber cable, which I made up a lot of. <clears throat> got some cable here and then I'm gonna make an ME storage bus actually do I have an ME chest in here I think I have a chest in here uh, I don't have an ME chest in here oh well uh, let's make a storage bus which is an interface a sticky piston can make an interface right no need an annihilation core and a formation core. There we go. And I should have some sticky pistons. Yes, we'll make an enemy storage bus. And we'll get a chest. Yeah, we'll get a chest just for the sake of argument. And then I need something that I have one of so that I can show how this is working. Um, let's go with this coal coke, okay? Now, with the ME storage bus that I have, I could just pop this down and pop that on the side and connect cable up and put the coal coke in here. And that'll be visible to the network, right? See, right there it is. Now, the trick is, if you want to interface with a whole bunch of things downstream, these cables that I'm currently using can only handle eight channels. Say I have something that's on the other side of my base where I need to have 20 or 30 channels. I'm going to have to use the dense cable. This stuff here, which, uh, where's the, just the Fluix. That requires glowstone, redstone, and four of these covered cables, which take the glass cable combined with wool. So that takes a lot of materials to get one of these cables. You don't want to run dense cable all over your base. So how do you avoid this? You use P2P tunnels. Um, can't remember if P2P stands for peer-to-peer -peer or point-to-point, -point, but regardless, you use these tunnels. So we attach the cables. We attach the P2P tunnels, not like that. The tunnel has to be facing this way. So let's break this again. 
How am I going to get this to attach properly? Am I going to have to do it like this? No. We'll do it like this. So, that goes into there now. Uh, we'll go ahead and attach that there. We'll break that. Put another one like that. Is that facing right? It's not facing right, is it? That's the storage bus. That's not the tunnel. Let's use the right block. There's the tunnel. There's that. There's the storage bus. And there's the connection there. Now, we're going to go ahead and link... Oh. Yep, we're going to load the device configuration to the memory card. Then we're going to... Come on. Load. And then copy. Right? These should be linked now. Or is it... Linked output side. Unlinked. Unlinked. Come on. Okay, anyway. Let's try and get these things running. So, if I take a look in the system right now, we'll notice the coal coke is not visible. These things here, if you notice these things are offline, well, I have a channel available, but it's not able to see this. That's because this cable here is considered a completely different ME network. Um, when I'm using P2P, I refer to this as the carrier line. So, how do we transform a carrier line into a powered line? Well, it's easy. You use either a, you, either you connect a power source onto this thing with an with an energy acceptor, or you can run quartz fiber cable. Quartz fiber cable carries power, but it doesn't carry data. Let's grab my drill back up and let's go ahead and break this quartz fiber because this isn't working properly. So, we'll connect this up here and we're going to go ahead and put a piece of quartz fiber there and we'll put a piece of glass cable there. Now, the devices are online, but they're unlinked. So, memory card cleared. Invalid machine. Copied device configuration. Loaded device configuration. The devices are online, but they're unlinked. Now, can I see? I can't see the coal coke, so something's wrong. Device offline and unlinked. Device online, linked output side. Device online, linked input side. Okay. So now it's working. So this is the output of the tunnel that I just said. This is the input. Everything's powered, everything's online. So if I look here, I can see that coal coke now because these networks are now linked. This tunnel is linked to this tunnel. It comes in on this side and it goes out on this side, right? This carrier line is a completely different network. It's being powered, but if I were to take, for example, my crafting terminal, let's actually make another terminal. Uh, yeah, well, no, let's not do that. Let's Let's go inside and steal the terminal from upstairs just for the sake of argument. Actually, we'll just, yeah, we'll steal the terminal from upstairs just for the sake of argument. Um, one thing that you'll notice is that we now have a premium furnace. It's really nice. Allows us to smelt up whole shit tons of stuff. And I broke a lot more than I was intending to break, but sure, whatever. We'll fix it later. 
But we got this ME crafting terminal. And if I were to come in here and slap this crafting terminal down on the carrier line right here, I can't see anything on our network because the carrier line is a completely different network, right? It can only see what's between these tunnels. It can't see outside the tunnels because this is only a carrier. Let's go ahead and break this and we're going to do something a little more... Uh, we'll do something that actually has more of a point a little bit later. Now, we're going to get on to the controller. An ME controller, when you put it down, it has to have power, first of all. It can act as an input block, so you can use this to power your network as well. Remember, if we break through the paper wall that I've placed down here, we've got this energy acceptor down here. Well, with this thing, we won't need the energy acceptor anymore, because the controller acts as an energy acceptor. The controller also gives us access to more channels. Each side of this controller provides 32 channels, okay? So it's 32 on this side, 32 on this side, 32 on this side, and so on and so forth. ME controllers can be built as multi-blocks with a couple of caveats. Let's go ahead and break these out. Let's take my 3x3 augment out of there so I stop breaking shit that I don't intend to. Now, these controllers can be built as multi-blocks with a couple of caveats. Let's get a power cell out of here. Not those. Let's get the power cell out just so I can show how this works. We put the power cell down and put the controller right next to it. The controller should be getting power, but it's not. Why is it not? We're outputting. Maybe I do have to have the energy acceptor. Let's get an energy acceptor. Or maybe it can't accept energy directly from the thing, but if I give it access to a conduit, it will. Yeah, there we go. Now you see it's lit up. It tells us that it's functioning. If we put another one down, that's perfectly fine, right? If we put another one down, still fine. What happens if we put one on this side? It's still fine. What happens if we put one here? Now it's not working. Why? Why is that not working? Because there are two, uh, there are three major rules for ME controllers. Number one, the ME controller, or four major rules. We'll say four. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to keep amending this, but number one, an ME controller you can only have one ME controller on a network. That's rule number one. Rule number two, all parts of an ME controller must be touching each other. Rule number three, the ME controller must be no more than seven by seven by seven. Rule number four, and this is why this isn't working, an ME controller can only touch three other ME controllers. You can't have a fourth, a fifth, or a sixth. So you can only have three connections to another ME controller. If I break this controller, it's going to work again because now it's only got three neighbors. So how is that going to work for us? Well, that is going to work for us because the controller that I'm going to use is going to be a 5x5. Five five. like that. And then we're going to put one block in like that, 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 and that. Okay? Now I'm actually not going to do this right here how I have it. Let's go ahead and pop my 3x3 three three back in. That's not going to work anyway. Can I wrench these? No, of course I can't wrench these. We're not going to do it exactly like I have it set up here. I do want to have it vertical like that, but we're going to do it against the wall.
just like that. We can change this later if we want to. I mean, there's nothing saying that we can't change it later. And I probably will change it at some point. But for right now, that's how it's going to work. We're going to put the cable or the conduit right there. We're going to attach the power cell right there. And that's going to light up the entire ME controller. Awesome. But we're not done. Because that's actually not where I'm going to put the con or the uh, power cell. I'm going to bury the power cell in this wall. You know what? Now that I think about it, I I I did some of the planning for the build ahead of time, but I haven't thought too much about it. And it has occurred to me that I actually do want to have this one away from the wall. For reasons I will get to in a little bit. Let's put that back up there. Let's go ahead and have the controller one out from the wall. Just like that. We're going to put the power cell back against the wall, like that. We're going to have the conduit come out like that, just like that. And that is going to give us full power on the ME controller, right? Good. That's part one. Part two, you may have noticed I still have two ME controller parts here. Why is that? Because I'm going to stack them out that way. Now, why is this working? Because I just said you can't have... Multiple, you, uh, I just said all parts of the ME controller have to be touching each other, right? Now, these are connected by a conduit. So why is this working? It's because I have two different ME controllers here. I have controller 1, which is the 5x5 five five with the four bits in there. And I have controller 2, which is the part that's sticking out here. Why? Why do I have that? Because I am going to set up an advanced ME network. I have four P2P tunnels already. I need a lot more than that. By my calculation, I figure I'm probably going to want about 32 of these things. And we're going to connect these like so. And, like so, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, okay, why is this one not working? It's got a connection. There. I don't know why that broke, but it broke. Okay, so we'll go ahead and attach to the front all of these. Okay? Have I lost you yet? If so, don't worry about it. I'm about to explain. This primary ME controller, this is the one that is going to provide all of the power, or all of the... Uh, channels to my ME network. This ME controller is going to be the part that handles the carrier. Now, this, since it's going to be attached to the carrier, is a completely different ME network. Completely different. So, if we attach, let's get some colored ME cable. Let's get some smart cable. So for smart cable, we need covered cable. And for covered cable, we basically just need any standard cable and some Fluix.
We're going to grab 16 to start, and I'm going to die half of these blue. Can I die them blue? Or do they have to be smart cables? They have to be smart cables before I can die them. Or, no, I can do cover, uh, covered cables. Oh. Like that. That gives me covered cable blue. And let's go ahead and dye the other ones. Let's dye the other ones white. Sounds good. Okay, and you know what? While we're at it, let's go ahead and upgrade them to smart cables because that's going to give us a better idea of what we're looking at. That's going to remove all of the coloring I just put on it. So we'll put a circle around that, and it's going to give us blue smart cable. And that's going to give us white smart cable. All right, now we're going to attach blue smart cable there. We're going to attach one there. Okay. We're going to bring this cable out, this cable out. And we're going to need some cable anchors. Now, these smart cables can carry eight channels, right? So I've got four length there, and I've got four length there. We put smart cable there, and this is all going to turn red. But if I put the cable anchor, well, actually, if I put the cable anchor on first, and then attach this. It's still working. Why is it still working? Because different networks. Okay? So, this is network one. This cable is carrying eight channels, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, eight, right? Let's go ahead and link up the rest of this just to you know show you that it's actually working i'm going to need some more smart cable for this so let's go ahead and make some more covered cable do i really not have any wool bunch of string We'll save half of the wool. There we go. 23, let's go for an even 24. Upgrade this into smart cable. <clears throat> There's 24 bits of smart cable. And actually, let's upgrade all of this too. So, shit ton of smart cable. And, let's dye a little bit more of it blue. And a little bit more of it white. Okay. We're going to continue with the blue. One, two. Pop the cable anchor there. Three, four, five. Okay? Good. Let's pop some cable anchors there, 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 and there. Okay? We're going to go around. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and pop the cable anchors on top of here, too. And dig down, and we'll pop some there there and there and let's get a little more of the blue smart cable cuz i'm saving the white for another purpose 16 will be enough 
two, three, four, five. Cable anchor, six, seven. Anchor, eight, right? Connect that in there. And we'll see, we've got eight channels there. We've got eight channels there, eight channels there. separate all of these cables because we don't want these cables to interlink. These cables are carrying all the channels that they can possibly carry. If we were using a heavier cable, it would work, but we're not. And I don't feel like spending the uh, resource costs to get the heavier cable to do this. So and there's our eight channels coming into there. Now what have we accomplished here? If we stop and take a look at this, we have 16 on the outside and 16 on the inside, right? A P2P tunnel can carry up to 32 channels. We have 32 P2P connections. So if we take 32 times 32, we have a total maximum of 1,024 channels available to us being carried on 32 P2P buses. What that means is that we can run one dense cable out of the end of this controller and that will handle all 1024 channels. Let me go ahead and put this together for you so that you can see that this is actually working. This is going to require us to disconnect our network here momentarily. Uh, let's get some cable. We'll go ahead and grab smart cable for this. And I'm going to dig up the floor. Because I'm going to connect. Let's see, how do I want to do this? I've got power there. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and I have some P2P on me. No, I don't. I need to get some more P2P tunnels. We'll start out with eight. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a P2P tunnel on the end of this. We're going to use a cable anchor. which I'm actually going to put cable anchors on all sides of these cables to keep them from linking. Okay. And we'll put them out on the cardinal directions too to keep them from linking there. So if I were to take this white cable that I have, this white cable is a carrier. This is a carrier line. Okay, we're going to link start with this one. Copy, paste. Or is it the other way around? Copy, paste. Devices online but unlinked. Devices offline but unlinked. Device offline, device missing channel, device online, hmm, let's clear this memory card entirely. Devices online, devices offline. Hmm. Wonder why this is not working. Because it's carrying the device channel into there. Is 
the semi-controller is online. I might be overcomplicating things, to tell you the truth. Oh wait, no, 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 I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. This is the carrier, okay? This is the input. The output needs to be on the end of whatever cable I put on, so we'll attach the cable directly. Right? <clears throat> now, if I want to interface with this, what I do is I pop down a piece of cable and we can break this energy acceptor out because we're not going to need the energy acceptor anymore. We put down the P2P tunnel here connect this with our cable, and we've got a piece of smart cable here, so we'll be able to see the number of channels that we've got going through. And then we run this cable over here and link it. Device is online but unlinked. Where's my memory card? There it is. Memory card cleared. Copy, paste. Device is online but unlinked. So is it copy, paste? Device is offline, unlinked. Linked output side. Linked input side. Our network is back online. We can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six channels in use because it's got two bright lines and two dim lines. I think that's how it works, isn't it? Eh, hell if I can remember. But We take a look at this, uh, let's get a network diagnostic tool. Uh, let's see, a uh, wrench, calculation processor, an illuminated panel. So I'll have to make some more quartz glass real quick to get the illuminated panel. And there's our network tool. Take a look at this, and oh, that's not what I meant to do. Pop that in, and yeah, we've got two dim and two bright, so one, two, three, four, five, six channels that are currently in use here, right? This thing is currently operational. We can access our entire ME network, but that's no surprise because everything here is connected. It's physically connected, right? The only thing we've proven is that we're transmitting power. Let's prove that we're actually transmitting data. Remember this piece of coal coke that I reserved out? Let's pop him down here. Okay. Let's put the storage bus on here. And we're going to connect a piece of the smart cable, the white smart cable, because this is our data line that we're running. We're going to connect a piece of that out here. Pop a P2P tunnel on here. And then we'll run a piece of smart cable so that we can show the channel. And a piece of that. Okay. Then we're going to come over here to this completely unused P2P tunnel. We're going to right click that, we're going to left click that, and I don't know why it seems like it wants to work sometimes and not others. Okay, that's the output side, that's the input side. 
we can see we have a channel in use. We've got one gray line let up now. I don't think the output side and input side really matters, to tell you the truth. We can see that cold coke. This chest is now linked through this P2P tunnel, which is being controlled by this network, and it's being transmitted by this other network, which is nothing but a carrier network. The carrier network is transmitting this signal into this controller, which is being filtered over to here, which is being carried from this P2P tunnel back into the carrier network and over to here. Basically what we've accomplished is this tiny little build here has given us 1,024 channels. Each one of these is capable of handling 32 channels. Each one of these is capable of handling 32 channels. So basically we've gained the ability to send data through smallish cables pretty much anywhere we want to go. Now, there's one other part that I want to do for this build before I wrap it up, and then I'm going to do a, a large part of this off camera. I'm going to do most of the setup actually off camera. I'm not going to do it next episode. This was just to get the ability to do this. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to get some dense cable. We're going to take this white cable that I had. Um, give me dense cable white. Fluix. Um... I guess I might actually have to use just the smart cable. Wait. I mean dense cable, it just takes the... Okay, the, the dense cable is just covered cable. So, do I have any covered cable left? Of course I don't. Turned it all into smart cable. Can I change smart cable back to cover cable? No, I can change it back into regular Fluix. But I can't change it back into, ah, oh, whatever. Smart cable, smart cable. I've got some glass cable here. Still have a bit of wool that I reserved. So we'll make a little bit more of this. Um, yeah, I guess I have to use the Fluix, huh? And we'll go redstone, glowstone. This gets us three pieces of dense cable, okay? We're gonna run dense cable out of this, okay? Now, you'll notice that this is not operational at the moment. It is now, because this ME uh, the ME term, uh, blah, blah, blah. the connection is still in place. This dense cable is capable of carrying 32 channels. I have 32 P2P tunnels here, which means this cable can handle everything that I need it to handle. This one P2P tunnel transmits 32 channels. This can take 32 channels. So. Um, the cable here is capable of carrying 32 channels, but right now it's only using two, this one, or not, right now it's only using one, that. This cable is capable of handling 32 of these buses, each of, with, each of which is capable of handling 32 channels. So this one cable can carry the entire damn network. 
All I have to do is put, I'm going to actually need one more piece of this cable. Um, do I have enough wool for it? Yes. I have just enough wool for it. Redstone, glowstone, dense cable. Because remember, this glass cable can carry 32 channels, right? Or, no, the glass cable can carry 8 channels. The dense cable can carry 32. So, this line can have 8 of these tunnels on it. If I put another line going off that way, it can have 8 channels on it. Another line this way, it can have 8 channels. Another one that way, it can have 8 channels. That's our 32 P2P buses, each of which can carry 32 lines. If I want to run more P2P buses, I can I just have to have additional cables coming off of this dense cable. I can extend the dense cable down, and yeah, we can do that. Or I can add another dense cable, because each one of these can handle 32 sides. Basically, this has given me the ability to run ME up to 100 or up to 1,024 different machines in pretty much any configuration I could need. And it's all powered by this one power cell. Pretty neat, huh? I realize I may have lost some of you here because this is pretty advanced as far as an ME system goes. Like, this is more complicated than most people will need. And it's probably honestly more complicated than I need. But I want to do it just because I've never set up this particular type of ME network before. I wanted to, you know, play around with it and see how it works. So let's break out all of the cable going out to here. This enhanced energy conduit can stay there because it's going the other way. And let's pop uh, let's pop up here and grab some dirt. And I'm going to patch this cam uh, patch this off camera. And then when we come back, we're going to go a completely different direction. This is mostly just I wanted to get it set up so that I can work with it further down the road. Um, I will devote another episode to discussing how this thing works and running channels off to get to various machines and stuff like that. But I've got another concern that I want to get running so it can idle. And that is going to be next episode. So thank you guys for watching. This has been Night Dagger with Let's Play on Gulch Gorge, episode 18, getting the ME controller set up. Uh, again, if you were confused by this, um, I'm actually going to link a video in the description of this video that goes through and explains all about ME controllers and it touches on P2P networks and it explains how this controller I set up works. He uses a different design than I do, but he goes through the theory and it, he does a better job of explaining it than I do, I think. So, check that out if you guys have any questions or I'll explain it again when I start actually using the channels. But one way or another... Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later, peeps.